Hello, and welcome back to the living room, although it's from an angle you've never seen before, because when we're usually in here, I'm by the TV. Well, the TV's over on that wall. This is the fireplace end of the room. It's Christmas, so I decided to tell you all a story about one of my favorite Christmases as a child. First, I have to talk about my dad a bit, because kind of like in the real Christmas story, which this is nothing like, so don't, <laughs> don't freak out. In the real Christmas story, you know, the dad was the important figure. Well, he is in my life too. And by the way, this Christmas, it was 20 years ago, this Christmas was my last Christmas with my dad. I was born many years ago in the 1950s in Texas. My dad was a Sears store manager. And I think he had become a Sears store manager right around the time I was born. So my, pretty much my entire childhood, he was a store manager. Before that, he'd been like department manager. He'd worked his way up. Being a Sears store manager, you know what Sears stores all had? Santa. So I got to spend a lot of time with Santa. First, I'll tell you a little bit about, I was a, a late child, long, came along after my sister and brothers, and my dad kind of doted on me. I have two quick stories. Uh, one summer, he decided to take the family on a trip to Washington, D.C. I would have been one or maybe two, somewhere in there. And the plan was, we're gonna stop off at my grandmother's house, they were gonna drop me off for my grandma to take care of, while the rest of the family went off to Washington, D.C. Well, Dad couldn't leave me behind. Oh, did he come to regret that decision. Because apparently my favorite, now remember this is back before car air conditioning was a big deal, so the windows were almost always down. And my favorite thing to do as a child, apparently, was take my pacifier and throw it out the window and then cry until I got another one. My parents never figured out about tying it to a string around my neck or anything. I, of course, I don't remember, I was like two. But my dad said it turned into a fairly miserable trip because I, but of course he loved me and so he liked having me. Here, here's another story. When I was six, when I was in first grade, the school had this giant gas main out, surrounded by a chain link fence out in, behind the schoolyard. One day on a dare, I climbed over the fence and climbed up on and was hanging all over the gas main. And one of the things I hung on was apparently a valve, which I then ripped off and opened. And then of course, natural gas started spreading everywhere, which was not a good thing. They had to evacuate the school. I got sent home and my mother said, wait till your father gets home. You, you, you all probably heard that before. Wait till your father gets home. So my dad gets home and he takes me in the bathroom and, and, and pulls his belt off and bends me over the, the, the bathtub edge. And apparently, again, I don't remember, I was six. I vaguely remember, my dad tells the story, told the story. Apparently I turned back and looked up at him and said, you wouldn't hit your little bitty buddy, would you? And he looked at me and he said, nope, I don't think I would. And he put his belt back on, my mother was so furious. But that just tells you, I was never disciplined as a child other than yelled at. I mean, I was never hit, which, you know, look, look how I turned out. So maybe that was a good idea, maybe it wasn't. Well, we'll see. So my dad really loved me and I was his little bitty buddy. Now, remember he was a steer store manager, so he always came home, he worked long hours. And so he'd usually come home like right before it was my bedtime. So we'd play Chippendale, which was me crawling all over him like he was a tree. And I guess he, he was he was Chip and I was Dale. I don't know, we were chipmunks. And he put up with this like almost every night. He, he was a great father, but he was also a great store manager. And this is where the things start to come together. What do Sears stores have? Santa Clauses. So one year, and this would have been, I guess I would have been nine or 10. They were gonna fly Santa Claus in on a helicopter and have him land on the roof of the store. And I got, my dad arranged for me to be in the helicopter with Santa, which I thought was the coolest thing ever until I got in the helicopter. Cause it was one of those old, this was in the, remember this is in the like 1950s, early sixties. And it was one of those bubble things and it didn't have doors. So you're sitting in this plexiglass bubble without doors. And you know I mean? Like if your seatbelt fails, you're dead. Cause you're going to plummet to your death. Santa held me in his lap, but anyway, I flew in. So that was my first ride on a helicopter when I was like, I don't know, nine years old. It was great, but that's not the best part. The best part 
As you know, Sears had a big toy section for Christmas, only at Christmas time. Christmas holidays, after Thanksgiving, Sears would move in. Yes, after Thanksgiving. Sears would move in all the toys and set up a toy department. Dad had this display manager, Charlie Webb. I'll never forget the guy's name. Well, when, you fin when I finish the story, you'll know why I never forgot his name. He used to make displays and he started for them at one store and then Dad got trans the one where I took the helicopter ride, that Charlie Webb worked for him at that store, but then we got transferred to another store in another state. My dad pulled strings to get Charlie transferred too because he said he was the best display man. My dad was, he was a great store manager. He could tell, he said, well, when Charlie, Charlie's windows bring in 22% more foot traffic, because you know, he, he designed the windows. Like in the movie A Christmas Story at Higby's, the windows, displays, that was a big deal back in the 50s and 60s, well, in the 40s in A Christmas Story. But back in the 50s, 60s, it was still a big deal. So Charlie Webb did all this stuff and, and he was a great guy and he, he moved with him. All my life, since my dad was a store manager, pretty much all my life, on Christmas day, after we opened all our presents, dad would load all the kids in the car and take us down to Sears, which was closed. And he'd use his keys and turn off the alarm and let us in and he'd take us into the toy section and say, pick any one thing. We could have any toy, of course, that hadn't sold, so none of the popular toys were still there. <laughs> but we could have any toy we wanted that was still on in, on the shelf because he, they were just going to send it all back to the to the vendors the next day, you know, the day after Christmas. They're packing it all up, so we got one extra toy, and it, oh, we loved that trip. We'd take my dog Mikey. He was a little Boston black and white Boston Bull Terrier. And we'd run through the store, you know, and, and Sears had all the uh, terrazzo floors, you know, the, the, the departments had carpet, but the aisles were terrazzo. And we'd run and run and then we'd stop. And of course, the dog couldn't stop. And so he'd go, or we'd turn a corner and he'd, he'd do like in the cartoons where he's keeping going forward while he's trying to turn and smash into a door. We weren't torturing the dog. The dog loved this. He thought it was the best fun he ever had. Not quite. The best fun he ever had, he had an old army blanket. We would play tug of war and he wouldn't let go. And I'd end up like flinging him over my head like a helicopter. He loved that too. Mikey, I miss Mikey. So we'd go down to Sears and we'd take this dog and we'd just have a great time. Then came the year, Christmas day, piled in the car, went down to the toy department, pick any one thing. Remember Charlie Webb? <laughs> The, the, the display manager, what he had done that year in the toy department is he had built the most amazing electric train set. He had used paper mache. I mean, he had gone all, it was like a work of art. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. There were tunnels and mountains and things and oh my God, it was just amazing. And it was, it was big. It was like, I don't know, like six feet by eight feet giant thing. So I told my dad, that, that's my one thing. I want that. He argued with me about it a little, but Charlie Webb broke that thing down into pieces, brought it to our house, set it up in the garage, and I had the coolest train set. Oh, plus I knew Charlie from, you know, hanging out at the store, you know, after school sometime I'd go hang out at the store with my dad or, or with, he'd, he'd like send me to Charlie to the display department to, you know, play with things. So I knew Charlie and Charlie knew I loved dinosaurs. So when he was finished setting up my train set in, in my garage, there were dinosaurs. There was a little town, there were little houses, but there were like dinosaurs wandering around by the mountain tunnel and oh my God, it was the greatest Christmas ever. That's how much my dad loved me. I found out later in life how much my dad really loved me. He retired while I was still in college and my sophomore year, we didn't have enough money for the tuition because he had retired and, and, I, and I was having trouble getting student loans. He sold his boat to pay my tuition. The only thing I thought he loved more than me was that boat. And I come to find out, no, he actually loved me more because he sold his boat to give me a college education. I love Frank. He was a great dad and a great Sears store manager, by the way. He retired in like 1972 when it was still Walmart was just coming up at that point, so Sears hadn't started the great decline, but he saw the writing on the wall. In fact, years ago, he told me that, that he said, Walmart's gonna suffer the same fate as Sears. And I said, how do you know that? He said, well, because one of the reasons I left Sears was they were taking away the decision-making authority from the managers and 
centralizing everything. Well, when Sam Walton ran Walmart, the store managers had say over almost everything, but after he died, yeah, you got it. They started centralizing it. And my dad said, they're gonna hit the same path. Now they didn't hit the downward spiral, but that's when their growth stopped. Given the store manager's agency and letting them pick what they stock in their stores, they can, my dad could sell anything because he knew what people wanted in his town. That's about it. I know it wasn't an exciting story, but hey, I got a great train set out of it. So I was happy. My dad made me happy. And by me being happy made my dad happy. And then it just, it was a cascading thing. And that's when I learned years ago, if you watch my other uh, Dr. Wiggle on Life about kindness, he's the one that taught me about kindness too. If you're nice to people, it comes back, it pays dividends. It's, oh, just, just go out and try being nice to people and see if you don't start getting things. Free upgrades and for, to first class. Stuff like that would happen to my dad all the time. It happens to me all the time. Why? Because we're nice to people. We treat them like humans. Go watch that video. Here, I'll, 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 I don't even know where I'll link it. Over here? <laughs> I'll link it up above, but it was the, the video on kindness. Be kind to people. And, and now it's Christmas time. So be nice to everybody. Jesus wants you to be nice. It's his birthday. For Jesus' birthday, go out and be nice to some people. It'll make other people happy, and it will make you happy. Anyway, that's it for this week. Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a happy holiday, whatever you believe in. Go out and celebrate and have a great time. And New Year's is just a week away. So go out and get drunk and have a great time or stay home and don't get drunk and have a great time, which by the way, I think 74% of people would rather stay at home on New Year's Eve than go out to a party. So I'm one of those people. But guess what? I'll be out at a party. Yes. <laughs> you have friends, you can. Anyway, so that's it from here. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.